Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the HGL Grand Finals, where we have successfully combatted the tech issues. I think Trump, you ready to do this? Yeah, ready. Oh, it looks like oh, it's uh. Heads up energy now. Yeah, I know. I'm just. <gasps> Let's go. Let's do this. So I am now. I'm now joining the game. Here we go. We're gonna head into the match to see if it's working properly. Ah, most excellent. The match has already begun. It's going to be Nazor from Team Amazon. Whoops. No, we're switching back to the SPRK point of view. We're going back here. We're awaiting the invite. Need, need invite from Nazor. Excellent. So right now, the series is 2-0 and o in favor of Amazon. And this began by this freeze mage actually taking out the priest. Ah! Oh. Yeah, that's an unfortunate matchup to run your priest into freeze mage. Um... The Hunter matchup is commonly thought of to be Freeze Mage favorite as well. Let's see if we can get this building to Nazor's cards. No, for some reason it is not. Oh, there we go. Ah, it looks like to be a little bit more of the mid rangey brand. Or maybe just straight aggro running high mains. Yeah, it likes to be one of those hybrid versions. Uh, recently come into popularity where you're not one, you're not the other. You're basically face hunter with the Savannah high name and the Gosama high name is really good. Or you are like your or your mid-range hunter with a few aggro cards because aggro cards are good. It's madness these days. And this is one of these interesting spots where we see the hunter actually coming out into the gameplay when previously. We were talking about how often the hunter gets banned. And I mean it looks like Freeze Mage is the choice. Or Spurks from Team Microsoft. And, well, with the Freeze Mage and the other... I'm actually going to scroll down to his decks to see if he's running, like, some super anti aggro meta. Yeah, it looks like he has... It's a Taunt Druid. Uh, yeah, a Handlock and a Freeze Mage. Are going to be the choices for Spurks, who's already doing quite well with Freeze Mage. Yeah. Um, if he managed to match up his Freeze Mage against both Face Hunter and Priest, I'd say he's doing pretty well for himself. Uh, pretty simple matchup, I'd say. It's all about whether or not you can just keep stalling until you... Like, that's the same for Freeze Mage against any class, but especially against Hunter, it's a test of more of whether or not you can stay alive than stalling. <laughs> oh, Doomsayer's out, but it looks like it might just have to be a naked blizzard at this point in time. No real way to leverage that. In terms of secrets, this is an ice block, not an ice barrier. A second ice block in the hand, and I mean, I feel like having two ice blocks in the hand, it's like such a boon against this sort of hunter deck. Yep, ooh, this is an interesting play that he's concerned. He's thinking about Frostbolt, probably Savannah, and then maybe Fire Blast, and then Doomsayer. If you Doomsayer against only a 1-1, one -one, that's pretty good. A nice creative play, man. Well, there's an Owl in hand. Yep, easy owl. Uh, question would be whether or not he wants to commit more to the board on top of it, because he could go up to Knife Juggler, Worgen Infiltrator, and Owl. His decision point's going to be how much does he want to play around Blizzard and Flamestrike. Yeah, I mean, like, I actually have played Face Hunter so rarely against a Freeze Mage. I mean, is it correct to try to just blitz down no matter what and just accept? Because, I mean, if you're at 18 health at turn 7. That This is a pretty good result for the Freeze Mage. Especially with these sorts of cards in hand. Right, it is looking pretty good for the Freeze Mage. Um, whew, this is a tough spot. It, I don't think he can be blamed no matter what. Like, you could do you could do the all-in play of uh, Knife Juggler, Owl, Morgan. You can do somewhere in between where you play only one of uh, play two of those three cards, or you're gonna play it super defensively with only Owl. In this case, Owl is actually the best play, as everything else would have died to an AoE. So, a good sharp move to buy him here. 
And this is a nice, good restarting turn, especially with the Mad Scientist there. I mean, you're going to expect a huge number of AoEs against the Freeze Mage. But right now, I mean, despite the fact that there's all the delay tactics for Sprix right now, he doesn't have any of his finishing meat there. Alex Straz is present. He's had to spend a Frostbolt. And you pretty much do need to get out Fireball, Frostbolt, Ice Lance all together, or Antonitis, to be able to finish off the sort of hunter. That's right. Sprix has issues right now. He can stay alive for quite some time with that heal bot, with those two ice blocks. He can uh, keep clearing the board, but like you mentioned, he does need some way to kill the opponent. Right now, he has literally zero things that do damage to the face of the Malix. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm curious how much we're going to see commitment out of Nazar on this. I mean, it's very easy for him to just dump his whole hand right now. But yeah, um, a little bit this of time really might, be the best, might be the best play, yeah. He baited out one AoE already with minimal losses. So he has to decide just how much to include in this one. He can go Mad Scientist, he can go Mad Scientist, Map Juggler, Morgan Infiltrator. He's gonna go with the bare bones yet again. Fireball's out, so it looks like once the Blizzard comes down, now. Pinging the Hero Power, and then Morgan Infiltrator, and then the. Wait, Morgan Infiltrator is not a beast, is it? It is not. SBRX is really happy that he's played it so slow. Now. With both AoEs out of the way, and like neither one putting on that much pressure, I would expect him to play everything. This is actually getting a little tricky for Sprix. He's in somewhat of an odd situation in that he's going to be down to basically no health. Mm -hmm. He can double up his um, ice blocks, but, you know, Alex Straz is suddenly starting to say, well, maybe you should use me on yourself. Antique heal bot's definitely going to have to get used. Yeah, that's a good point. This might be one of those games, especially since he has no finishing burn, that using the extra nine points of heal on yourself could buy you a lot of time. And then perhaps you use uh, Alex Straza to help you finish the game, or you just use, like, heal bot beatdown. The other play to consider is just the good old flame strike. Um, if he flame strikes, he'll go down to four. It's no guarantee that ice block will be popped. If it is popped, then and then uh oh, <laughs> well, kind of uh oh, because then he can ice block and then heal bot, and then possibly the second uh, ice block wouldn't get popped immediately. Um, I think he's calculating whether or not he needs the Alex draws a damage on the opponent's face oh, in order to win this game. One, one interesting thing the opponent could have considered, and probably did consider, is whether or not to play the Leprechaun this early, because uh, it does go through Ice Block if if, you, if your opponent's forced to AoE into it. Alright, goes with the defensive measure here. Hmm. Well, now with the Abusive Sergeant. Yeah, I mean, this... There's really not too much fancy that Nazar is going to be doing. He's just going to be straight up being down at this point in time. Yeah, he's going to break. Trap up. Yeah. We'll go down two, three. Should he buy here? What was that? Absolutely, break the block. I mean, especially with the. Heal bot right there. I mean, it's it's pretty common to run just one heal bot freeze mage instead of two. Okay, so here is here's a moment where we have to be very careful. Oh my god! Oh my oh god! If he gets shot in the face. Potential uh, for sure. Oh. Uh, it. Oh. Oh my. <laughs> oh my god. Oh! Wow. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! The risk! He didn't want to go straight to the face because he thought, well, you know, if it's an explosive trap and I die, well, there you go, that's bad. <laughs> right? Like, but. Oh my god, the snake trap! Oh my god, the snake trap! Wow. Oh my god, he had to. He. I mean. 
Obviously, Ice Block doesn't trigger on your own turn. I've lived through that mistake personally. Oh, oh no! I mean, you can. I mean, I guess you can Flame Strike, Ice Block, pass, get popped, then play Alexstrasza. I think what he did was correct. Kind of an unfortunate set of circumstances. Oh, we have to land two knives out of three on a one and four. Uh, unlikely. Wow, double Kazan Mystic! Cute into Hunter. That is oh. so cute. <laughs> oh god, keep both. Keep both, please. Oh my god, hold on to all of that. Well, not the Savage Roar, but the keys. Oh my gosh. Dude, the double tech cards. I don't know about keeping both, because if your opponent doesn't have a secret, then you're gonna lose. Well, I mean, yeah, but you gotta keep both here, man. You gotta show them the hate. Because that's the thing, is that, like, we, we... You were talking about this at the very start, where when it's a King of the Hill style, it's very, very easy to build these extremely potent... Oh, here's the second one. So beautiful. It's very easy to just jam out uh, these sort of counter picks. Yeah, this is kind of unfortunate, though, because it might be the case where the counter the tech cards are good but they have no support and then you're going to die by the time you get to play either one thing that i like about both opponents are that uh both players uh they have a bit of fighting spirit in them and a bit of playfulness like two kazan mystics is very playful and a tundra wolf timber wolf uh, that card's also very interesting in the hunter side oh hell yeah need those one mana beasts to trigger the animal bite or kill command excuse me I always call it Animal Bite on my own stream. I know you call the uh, Senjin Shield Master the Tazdingo. Yeah. Um, animal Bite, you mean Skill Command? Oh, yeah, Skill Command. Skill Command, Kill Command, Animal Bite. Get in there and fight, maggot! Turn three Shade of Nox Noxramus, more than likely. Mm -hmm. At least he drew something playable on turn three. Hmm. Would you ever hero power to kill the two one? No, you have to uh, develop this card. It's so much more important. Well, I mean, the answer is yes if you don't have a three drop, but that would be the only circumstance. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Hunter's gonna be able to keep up good pressure. Makes perfect sense. PRX is going to be able to steal a secret. I know, he's gonna have to be careful to do this in the correct order and ping the 2-1, or not ping, hit the 2-1 with his shade, and then Keeper of the Grove. Never be too careful there. Oh, I was thinking, like, uh, kill the scientist and play the Kazan Mystic. Ah. Well, this play, he's gonna have the extra 2-4 on the board when the Mystic comes out, and there's... Likely to take a little less damage. Let's find out what the secret is. An explosive trap. That's such a good pickup for a druid. Explosive trap is one of the best druid cards against Hunter. <laughs> or a great druid card. Yeah, call it a good druid card. I got. I still so badly want vintage Hearthstone, which is any card from any deck, from any class, and you pick the hero power too. Oh, that would be beautiful. Every deck would have double preparation, double innervate. Ugh. Think about it, Trump. Oh, yeah. That wasn't a... Mm, that was a... Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, he doesn't know. He doesn't know. Here it comes. Here comes the mystic. Belcher. Ah. Okay. Just shutting down a little bit more damage. Might encourage... Uh, Nazor to want to use his animal bite to pick off the Belcher. Hmm. Yeah, showing a lot of restraint there. Uh, makes sense, it's on curve. You can play quote unquote on curve next turn with Kazan Mystic and a hero ability. What happens if there's an explosive trap and you steal another explosive oh, trap? Do you just have two explosive traps now? I've never actually seen that happen. I think you just end up destroying the second one. But I don't know for sure. I know, we might have like a reality bend moment here. If it's the case, I I have to assume that the Druid player might not know what happens either. 
<laughs> the very just... rare circumstance. This is gonna be a really good explosive trap steal. Oh my gosh. And the wrath! Oh my gosh! Oh! <laughs> oh no! The wrath. I mean, hitting both and then hero powering to get a little extra health I also think is a strong play. Yeah, that's good. Save the wrath for actual removal. Ooh. Is he... Ooh, I don't like... Oh, okay. Huh. I thought yeah. using the hero ability to clear the 1-1 one -one was much more uh, reasonable. Going to 15 health. He's out of the Force of Nature Savage Roar combo for the Hunter. <laughs> I really hope Explosive Trap goes down. I really want to know how this works. Science. Yeah, what is the science of two Explosive Traps? Okay, well there it is going up, so it's probably just going to be shoot her and pass. Okay, here's the big moment. 6-2 now. What's going to happen? Here it is. And it's just right, gone! Destroyed. It's just gone! <laughs> and there's Nazor in disbelief that Sprix has shown so much hate. This is a very difficult turn. I mean, Sprix can kill Nazor on the board next turn, so I think the Wolf Rider might even have to be used for removal here. It's not looking good for Nazor. Sprix with the very severe anti-pick. Of course, as you see, Nazor has a mage as a backup choice remaining. That's the sick thing, too. Double Kazan Mystic is good as for the next game. Oh, no. Oh, no. I don't know how much I like the forced pop trap. Oh, well, that's 4, 8, 10, 12. It's done. Spricks with the extreme counter pick. Still Ooh. goes to 12. Hunter's gonna go down, so it's just the mage. I haven't looked at what kind of mage it is yet. I'm going to begin to I spy it on the deck list. So the mage for Nazor, oh my gosh, it's a it, it's a secret mage. It has two counter spells, a duplicate, <laughs> and two mirror entities. Oh my god! Oh no. Well, I mean, you you when we've done cast before, you've talked about how that's like a really important Alien. element that you don't see on ladder that's so relevant here. You the counter picking and developing a good set of like awareness of covering all bases during this sort of match. And well, yeah, I mean, if your opponent is running a deck with two explosive traps and a snake trap and another deck with five secrets, then yeah, double keys on Mystic is, uh, it's good against that. Wow, this is the best deck ever to have two Kazan Mystics against. Yeah, this is a very interesting mage, though. It's uh, more of a mid-range control mage. Tries yeah. to get value out of their cards. Yeah, I think Duplicate is one of the most incredible cards out there for being deceptively strong. Where you can just have, you know, two Water Elementals, a Sylvanas, and two Sludge Belchers, and not many other cards, but... Wow, look at this Druid hand. Oh my gosh, I was looking at the deck list. I glanced away at the start of it. Oof. Well, I, I deeply respect Nazar's restraint running out the snow chuggers. It's very easy to just want to run out that unstable portal. What am I going to get? Would you uh, be tempted to follow the curve here, 3, 4, 5, or would you want to just... Yeah, I, I, I would shade Shieldmaster. And then... Yeah, I think I would too. Shade is so good. One put out early. Yeah, I... Uh-oh. Oh, drew a secret. Well, it's right. a counter spell, so... We have many it's not gonna, not gonna do too much for the moment. Double keys on Mystic. You know, the funny thing is that we're running this on such a massive delay that only just now are people starting to talk about the keys on Mystics <laughs> like showing up in the last... Oh my god. 
Well, so at this point in time, I feel like this is a very, very, very uncomfortable spot to be in. As a... Oh, wow, he hero powers. He assumes that it's going to be a mirror entity, and he doesn't want to run that risk. Right. Wow. Ooh. Wait, then so... how is he ever going to trigger that? I don't know. I... I... Like, you need to trigger it at one point, and the worst, I mean, the best thing you can give with a deck like this is pretty much the shade. So, unless he plans on never playing him in, ooh, that is... Oh! <laughs> this is, this is pretty dirty. Oh! Oh my god, he's gonna know, he's gonna know. He's gonna Wrath the three, and this is the, the, the problem is that Wrath is so tempting on both of those targets. Especially if you're 100% convinced that your opponent is running a mirror entity right now. Right, he has to play it. Uh, it goes oh my game, god. Which he actually got... deepens the mistake of last turn because he would, he would have been willing to play Shade probably into a mirror entity this turn anyways. Now of course double keys on Mystic is sick, but already I feel like Nazor has gotten all the value that he wants to get. Oh man, that Whirling's Affirmatic, uncontested. That's gonna pile the pain. Oof. I'm gonna keep making exasperated, painful noises. Just, uh. yes. I think this is perhaps the best you can hope for, but I mean, you can still get into a very nice situation. I mean, polymorphing this straight away is an option, but. Oh, looks like he is gonna go for it. Yeah, it's fine. Take out a uh, medium threat early. That's fine. Uh, this deck wow. doesn't run anything bigger than a 5-5 five five anyways. Now, here's something very important to note, is that Amazon, from the winner's bracket, they're currently leading 2-0. Nazor is up against the ropes, but if he wins this and then wins the next game, Amazon is the undefeated champions of the After Hours Gaming League Season 5 Hearthstone. Brought to you by Day9 TV. Cast by Day9 and Trump. You see how good I am? That was very good. Shilling it all out. That's right. Kaboom. Ooh, now, this is a, kind of a cool option. He's just going to get rid of the mana worm. No reason to go too crazy making that mana worm stay alive. Yeah. Um, a little bit... Should I say I'm surprised to see Sam? Well, when you see it only discount two cards, you should be surprised. But he does have a few late game cards in the deck with that. Now, it looks like he is just... Auto throwing that out, clearing the three two. He's probably going to similarly auto clear the other three two. Get himself powered up. <laughs> oh God! I mean, Nazor is getting some real good top decks. I don't even think he needs to get too concerned here. I mean, I feel like. Just running out the Sludge Belcher and not killing the 2-4. Yeah, because now there's a swipe won't kill Horison. Yeah, that's perfect. Unfortunately, the Forestam doesn't have too much value here. Oh, there's Kazan. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, quite surprisingly, with uh, five secrets in the deck, doesn't manage to grab it quite yet. So, I mean, at this point, there's nine damage coming next turn. Do you Ancient of Lore for cards, or do you Ancient of Lore to heal? Most of the time when you're up against a mage, you're going to be assuming that they have some sort of finishing burn in hand, which this deck does last. Yeah, I don't blame the heal. Um, and he'd look like a pretty... Uh -oh. He'd look like a genius if the opponent had fireball. But the problem is, if you heal, you basically commit yourself to losing the game, because you have nothing that can contest the board. You need the draw in order to have a chance. There's another 8 going to bring our druid friend Spritz down to 10 health. With, again, 9 as the threat next turn. That duplicate is a very nice target for the Kizan Mystic upcoming. <laughs> hey! Hello, friend. Let's get a little healing going yet again. Yep. Yeah, I mean, if you can heal once... It's consistent to do it again. Some, yeah, like, right, you want, kind of uh, in the same position. You want to be consistent. You don't want to just look like you're an indecisive human. There's the... Oh, that would have been the burnout right there. 8 plus 4. 12 damage. Just enough to kill Sprix last turn. Mm. 
think duplicate would be a fun play here. I wonder if he's going to play around Kazan Mystic, though. That would be so unbelievably boss to do that. Cool play there. I was expecting the Polymorph, but um, this is fun. Crossbolt Fire Blast over two turns. Yeah, so it seems like the... The way Sprix could and no duplicate? That is pretty cool. No duplicate at all. Oh, a wrath. Okay, well, well, I would wrath the 5 5 in the off chance I draw a swippy swipe. Mm -hmm. A force of nature. Damn. That's going to give him a little bit of breathing room. Yep, that buys him yet another turn. He's got to be careful not to go too efficient and try to use his face to kill the Sludge Belcher because that would put him at lethal. Right, that's unfortunate. What to do? Oh my gosh, the anti-value force of nature. All right, well, he's going to run all three into the Sludge Belcher and then say yet another turn. Well played. A I well played. And the concession... Deck there. We're gonna get to see it again. Yeah, that is now Mage versus Warlock, a guarantee the upcoming matchup. And the Warlock, if you take a look at the list, what sort of Warlock is it? I, I think it was it was a. I originally presumed that it was a handlock, like a standard handlock, but it's not running the two mountain giants. It's running Kizan Mystic and Extra Siphon Soul. Kind of a kind of a funky deck, and Ogre Brute is in there. I mean, what 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 are your thoughts on this deck? Well, first thought is it is definitely funky. Um, yeah, I mean, two wow, Iron Beak Owls. So many tech cards. Yeah, I mean, one Iron Beak Owl I found very comfortable in the handlock. Two Siphon Souls, a Ragnarosa, Doctor Boom, a Jaraxxus. Oh wow, two Siphon Souls. Yeah, right? Like, two Siphon Souls, Kazon Mystic, two Heal Bots, one Ogre Brute, two Iron Beak Owls, two Dark Bombs, one Mortal Coil. Definitely going off the script with this deck. That was in my approved deck list. Wow, that's... A... I mean, okay, so so to, to put this in perspective, among the three decks that Sprix is running, he has three Kazon Mystics. Hmm. Is it Kizan? Is it Kazan? I don't, I don't know my lore properly. I was uh, corrected when I first said uh, Kizan or Kazan. It, I think people were happy when I started calling it Kazan, so I think that's correct. Alakazan, Alakazan, yeah, Mister. Yeah. What an interesting handlock deck. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I suppose in this case you're just gonna go. Oh, well, abort plan. Lifetown. Now, There's no way you can expect the handlock deck to run Gazan Mystic. Yeah, I don't know how you I don't know how you predict that. Yogurt Brutes are a really interesting choice. Uh, at the beginning of Goblins vs. Gnomes, some people thought about removing the Ancient Watchers for two Ogre Brutes, but here we actually see uh, Warlock embracing both two Ancient Watchers and an Ogre Brute and two Silences. <laughs> oh, so that's what got removed. Wait, no. Wrong place. A couple choices for Nazor. Of course, he could have run out the Acolyte of Pain, too. Mm -hmm. Again, that card drawn going on, but yeah. being, of course, reasonably cautious there. Mousing over the Shadow Flames, Brix is just trying to let us know what his plan is at this point. Now, with, with those early plays, this Twilight Drake is not going to be quite as powerful. And I think that if I'm in Nazar's shoes, I'm going to be going, e You're doing what? Oh, okay. And, oh my gosh, don't forget, the Mirror Entity is one of the most dangerous cards to run against a handlock, because they pop out the Drake, and then you get a hearty 4-1. Wait, no, you actually copied the full Drake with Mirror Entity, which is really... Wait, you do? You do. Wait, really? No way. Really? With uh, mind games, though, you would get a 4-1. That's got to be what I'm thinking of. 
Because I, it, before saying that, Trump, I was 100% convinced. Time runs out on me. And you know what it feels like to be 100% convinced of something and be wrong, Trump? How does it feel? It feels like learning. Very good. Every yeah. day is a lesson. Yeah, man. Twilight Drake seems like the natural play, but instead electing the hero power. What's your read on delaying the Twilight Drake? I think you want to break the you want to check for mirror entity. So there, I would have played a uh, owl on this ogre. Probably, I would try owl onto ogre, and then uh, if it was mirror entity, which it is, I'd do uh, moral quote. But I guess he plans on saving the owl for one of the opponent's things, uh, or in this case, owl. Acolyte's pretty good. Oh, no, there's a nice play. I'm gonna trigger it. Mortal Coil. Easily able to ping it. And of course, the, the favorited object of the handlock is cards. Whoops. Whoopsie daisies. Oh my god, that owl is horrified. The owl's like, no, 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 no. No, 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 I'm gonna go down. Oh, there's Jaraxxus, the saboteur. Now keep in mind. Nazor is under quite a bit of pressure. If Nazor wins this, Amazon receives the first place prize of getting $5,000 donated to Child's Play. Hope Worldwide will, of course, receive $1,000 for the second place prize in that context. Well, it looks like right now. Ogre taking out the, uh, taking out the, uh, the good old Emperor Thor Excuse me. Well, it looks like we lost Trump. We're gonna bring him back in. Easy peasy. And there you go. Trump, welcome back. Good to be back. Let's see. So at this point, the Thor went down and only brought things down by one. See, I keep wanting to mouse over and just tap the dust a little bit. Always mm. feels good. Now, we've seen Nazor be relatively aggressive. Uh, we've seen the, uh... Yeah, we've seen Nazor be relatively aggressive in the previous game, but at this point, hasn't really gotten to get a good sort of oomphy start. Right. Uh, the problem with this type of control mage is it, I suppose it has inconsistent draws. It's nice when you start off with a low drop, and then you get yeah. your middle game, and then you get your late game. The problem with a deck like that is it's spread out a lot, and sometimes you can just get too many. Like, if, if your deck has five secrets in it, you're bound to draw some and clog up your hand. My shield for Argon! Well, just going straight for the 511. Right. That's a good check for Mirror Entity as well, yeah, because yeah, it's not safe. a terrible card to get copied. A uh, stronger play would have been Twilight Drake, but you can't play that in Mirror Entity, potentially. Because, as I just learned, I mean, it's going to be not a 4 1. So flame Strike. Tap Ping is a possibility just to clear the board and to keep it keep it rolling right in this matchup you really want to keep the fireball for the burst at the end so yeah yeah i would it, it takes a doing? it's really painful to have to fireball the twilight drake even though it looks more efficient than the flame strike since there's not that many minions but the handlock rarely has that many minions a good call to use the flame strike and fire blast oh. i could consider using the frostbolt that's actually pretty good too Keeps the three or the four three on the board, the ever growing one. And of course, the acolyte of pain being in hand is actually really nice, especially with two mana where you can potentially just draw it straight away. But I like the choice to keep the frostbolt. I mean, I, I, I feel like you can't be overstated how important it is to have burn in this matchup. Oh, Doctor Balanced, here he comes. Yeah, that's one of the fears from the handlock. Like, uh, against your zoo, you can just put up the big tones and stabilize at the end, and okay, they have nothing. But against the mage, it's a lot trickier. They can have this kind of 9 or even 15 damage burst. So it looks like Acolyte draw is what Nazar's leaning to. 
makes complete mm -hmm. sense. I don't think that he really want to do much else. Let me take another look back at the deck. Are there any big control spells? No, there's only that one flame strike. And Ooh. that's about it. Everything else is just sort of cutesy control type stuff. Oh, that's unfortunate for him. So he uh, tried to get the bomb to go on the Acolyte and not roll a 3 or 4, but it rolled a 4. At this point, just the one snow chugger or uh, snow chugger plus duplicate or water elemental can come down. This is just a really unfortunate spot to be in for Nazor. And it looks like Sprix is going to be in pretty good shape to put Microsoft on the map. Yep, Spritz looks like he has a very wide array of cards to do nearly everything. It's really nice to have a hand where you have no duplicates. I mean, no duplicate cards, uh, since you have so many options. <laughs> just like, no messing around from Sprix, he's like, alright, I'm gonna go kill that. He just runs headlong into it, no concern whatsoever. He has Thorson, he has Twilight Drake, he has nine cards in hand, about as good as you can ever hope for. Tempted to do a taunt, but, I mean... Sure, why not? Why not? Yeah, just, we don't need her. Which I think makes sense, you know, just keeping up the aggression, making sure that Nazor feels pressure to use burn spells so on the board. Even a little dirtily 2-3s can be a very big help. Nope, gonna keep everything up in the hand. Unstable portal. Alright, we're gonna need something amazing. Alright, RNG time, let's see what happens. And it's a Cabal Shadow Priest, huh? <laughs> Uh, I'd love a duplicate on that. That could have been a great target on that Sun Fairy Protector. Sick read by Sprix, seeing oh. that unstable portal. Could be a potential upcoming Cabal Shadow Priest. Wow. Great read. I feel like Snow Chugger Duplicate is one of the only things you can do what here, do? but... Mm, he's super Fireball and duplicate force. your Snow Chugger, though. Looks like it will be the kill on Dr. Boom. Yep. And he feels... Equally. <laughs> He feels too much pressure, he has to fireball the 5-5 five five, he feels, or otherwise he's going to have no momentum. And now we're going to have a 4-10 Drake. Easy peasy. It's going to get Bell Stone, it's going to get Life Tap. The counter spell is really not doing very much good here. Oof. Yep, that's PRX in the position, which all Hamlocks love to be. This is a good point time to point out that Nazar's deck isn't that aggressive. That's why he runs a heal butt as well. So yeah. when you run a control deck against a handlock deck, handlock deck really likes crushing these control decks. Yeah, I mean the heal bot coming out at this point is just <laughs> It almost feels like it's at least something on the board and duplicate because at least it's something. Because soon enough, there's just going to be so many giant monsters coming up. This is an interesting play, just ensuring that the heal bot is the thing that gets cloned. Mm -hmm. As a handlock player, you're like, ah, oh, you're at, you're at 50 health, whatever. I'll just kill you in two attacks, anyways. <laughs> Gosh. Oh. Oh. Looks like the Sun Fury Protector is going to come out. Uh oh, Cabal Shadow Priest is going to get the sickest value. But jeez, two Shadow Flames. Jirax. I mean, do you do you ever want to be running out Jiraxis anytime soon in this matchup, or are you just waiting to count how many Fireballs and Fire Blasts, or excuse me, uh, Fireballs and Frost Bolts have been used? It is really good to use Jiraxis as a heal in this matchup. Um, if you're, because. In this matchup, it's really hard to play Jiraxis when you're either not already super winning. Like the only, only the the only time where Jiraxis even gets played in this matchup is in those really close games where he almost burns you out and he has nothing, and then you use Jiraxis to recover. So I don't really see this card being played this game. I'll show them. I'll show them all. Robot's not going to get cloned anytime soon, and. Uh... Gosh, Nazor just has very few good options. Sprix is looking to be in prime position to put Microsoft back on the map. Microsoft, uh, for any of you who are regular followers of the HGL, is one of the winningest teams in history. They've won several StarCraft finals. 
They are in many of the final matches that we have this weekend. Serious all-star mode. Really a hellfire. Really. Alright. Wants to make sure hellfire doesn't get burned so he can dark bomb it seems. Oh no! He's gonna hit the priest! Oh, there's two shadow priests now! Alright! <laughs> SBR just does a little bit of a pause like oh what just happened uh, I don't think he yeah he hasn't seen the duplicate yet it's pretty unorthodox to run that card well, it's not that bad for it to get copied yeah Dark Bomb just gonna pick off the Sun Fury Protector and I wouldn't even be surprised to see absolutely nothing um Absolutely no no hit on the Twilight Drake on a creature just going straight for face. Mirror Entity is the choice. Polymorph comes up. Cabal Shadow Priest about to get some absolutely sick value. Here it comes. Oh, here it comes. Oh, here it is. I mean, do you shoot the 1-1 one, one, or do you take the 1-1? One, one? I feel like you take the 1-1 one, one and feel awesome. You do. Let me change. There it is. He's asking himself, is, does he sheep the 8-4? Which... I mean, all plays lo lead to losing this here. Man, I just got word that Microsoft has just won the League of Legends and CSGO HGL Finals, so they're looking to go for a crazy sweep. <laughs> Continued faced bashings out of SPRX. Yeah, that's the way that this game is going. SPRX is giving Microsoft some hope for their charity of choice. Hope Worldwide. Ooh, I like that. Man, there's so many tech cards from SPRX that he just has, he has so many answers. I mean, the fact that you can use Siphon Soul a little bit freely without much worry is, is just great. And it looks like the Cabal Shadow Priest is going to, again, amazingly get more value. Take him out. Take him out. Boom. Let me change your mind. Let me change your mind. <laughs> Shard number two. I find this so funny. So you can kill that. You can just siphon soul and move on with your life. Because again, there's one more siphon soul in this deck. A relatively uncommon occurrence, but no doubt a potent one. Boom. Okay, let's actually throw it. One of the interesting things about XPRX is he actually has no threats. It's all answers. Or unplayable cards. Ooh. It's kind of a nice pickup. XPRX might have missed an opportunity to play his uh, other Molten Giant at some point. Yeah, yeah. It's Fireball, even though it's, it's a little juicy to see, especially when you have an Ace Drake. Still hard because there's nothing but a front line right now out of SPRX. I mean, he's gonna Ancient Watcher. Oh gosh, what a great top deck. And probably another Life Tap coming up. Nazar's not giving up. You know, how often when you're running a Mage deck do you just suddenly wish you were running a Pyroblast? <laughs> Rarely, I think. Oh, be honest, man. Your opponent's at 11, you're just like, well. Maybe I'll just put Pyroblast into this deck, so next time that happens, covered. I think this is the logic of a true deck builder, do you think, Natrop? It is the way, it, it's certainly a good way to think about things. To make the, to ask yourself the question, oh, how good would these cards be? But you have to level-headedly look at it, because there's so many games where it's just, oh, this card is useless. I can't play it. You know, I'm I'm suddenly a little surprised. I, I wasn't keeping track of the cards. There's one card left remaining for SPRX. Six remaining, and here we have we have Polymorph and we have Fireball. Oh my god! And the last card oh is Ragnaros! Oh, that's a good one. Ugh. Unfortunately that meets Polymorph. Huh. Wow. That's wow, wow, wow. Without the two mountain giants. That loses out on a lot of presents too. Polymorph, ping. So this is this is this is a dangerous spot to be in, because Jaraxxus 
Summoning Jaraxxus will immediately deal three damage to the face. This could actually... Oh, man. Is he gonna Jaraxxus? Because that's two, six, ten. Oh, no. He's gonna no, Molten The fatigue just get him, uh, got him to Molten Giant range. Pretty nice. No answer to that one. Well, I guess you gotta just Fireball it? That's his only play. It's not a pretty one. <laughs> Go, Nazor! I want to see yet another really odd, weird comeback. Because, I mean, like you were saying, there are... There's just not a lot of threats for SPRX. It's just, it's just answers. At this point, hitting him twice no in the face of Drax is, is a really good last-ditch threat. Um, both Fireballs have been used, and a Frostbolt, so... There's almost no burst possibilities, and he's gonna hide himself oh, behind a ton. Whichever secret that is, you just casually take that. Oh, unstable portal! Oh my god, RNG time! Let's go! My god, Alex Raza, Chromagus! Oh no! <laughs> oh, roar, bro! Well, I guess that means SPRX is uh, gonna try to figure out some way to aim around. Nazor was so close. He's mousing over, he's trying to find some way. And the secret that's gonna come out of his deck is a counter spell. The only question now is do we style with Kazan Mystic? We style with Kazan Mystic. Alakazan. Man, three fatigue damage deep in SPR. We actually have to style because it could be ice block. Oh, okay. no. Oh, and an anti heal block. Brutality. Heals right on up to the face. And that means the score is now no longer a sweep, but is rather two and one. We're going to remove all the elimination from the screen because the upcoming match is going to be our game number four double header going to be Pagoda Pie versus Silver Mist. Alright, awesome. well, good on SPRX bringing that back. Stop still got a chance. Amazon just needs to take out one of these next three matches, or take out the final ace match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 